Today, I'm gonna break down exactly how your phone is spying on you and what you can do about it. Pretty much all of you have a phone that looks like this or this or countless other phones. Now, I've done a lot of videos on burner phones, anonymous phones, crypto phones, and literally how to be 100% off-grid with a phone. However, there are some caveats on that, and I'm gonna break down how you can be private with any phone, but you need to understand the limitations of the phone. Today, in Operation Anonymous Smartphone. Now, as I said, Anonymous Smartphone in the intro, I literally you know, understood what I was saying in my brain. There's no such thing as an anonymous smartphone, but you can make it more anonymous than pretty much all the people around you. And that's really what we're gonna focus on today. So here I've got the newest iPhone with the 100 cameras on the back and you know, being iPhone as it is. And here I've got a Linux phone, okay? So I've got two phones as representation. Now, frankly, regardless if you have iPhone, Android, or Linux, there are things you can do, but also all of them have limitations. Linux is gonna be the best. Something like the Librem is gonna be way better than an iPhone or Android. De-Googling an Android is a good option, but we're just gonna say any phone for the sake of this. So I get that there are levels to this, and again, I've done videos on that. Check them out. You can see a couple of them here of videos that I've done on burner phones, etc. What I wanna break down is what you should do when you get your phone. First thing is you should put some gaff tape on the cameras, like I did here, and like I did here, I taped the cameras. If you wanna use the cameras, you can tape, take the tape off anytime. Now, this particular phone has switches, meaning I could turn off things like the cameras. Do I trust it? No, I tape this every time I use it, but it does have switches built in, which is kinda of cool. That said, I tape the cameras. The next thing you wanna do is utilize something like a mic lock when you are using this. And you're also gonna wanna utilize something like a hardware authenticator, okay? So here in my bag of tricks, I have a few different things that we're gonna wanna use. One is a mic lock. This can be plugged in the microphone and that's gonna help keep it secure and it's gonna give you a hardware option. I'm much more a fan of hardware options than I am software options because software can be hacked. This is an authenticator. Okay, what this will do is hardware authenticate things that you don't want to get hacked. Vital to have. Kind of like if you're in crypto, you might have a hardware wallet. You should have a hardware wallet. Well, this is an authenticator that you can use. So these two devices go hand in hand. Also, if you're charging the device, you need one of these. That way you don't become the victim of juice jacking because you can install malware into the power and they can steal your data and they can take full control of your phone. You plug it into a charger at a coffee shop or at an airport, they take full control of your phone, they can steal your crypto, your banking information, your social media information, your text, you just bought something on the internet, everything about you, your whole identity gone in an instant because you didn't buy this $8 device. Yeah, I know. So doing that is vital. Now, the next thing that I recommend you do that I strongly recommend you do is you go to the privacy settings and you turn off location, you turn off any access to any apps unless it vitally needs it. And in fact, I've got a habit of every, almost every app I use with a, a few exceptions. I use the app and then I delete it. So my rule is, am I going to use this app within 24 hours? If the answer is that an absolute unequivocal yes, I delete the app. Now, a lot of people panic like, oh my gosh, on these modern phones, it takes me two seconds to reinstall the app. You can save the password in your chain. You can have an encrypted password that literally brings the passwords back in. The, the setup time, let's say I had to talk to somebody and I had to talk to them on Zoom, okay, Zoom. I don't trust Zoom. Okay, I trust Zoom about as far as I could throw it. And since I can't even grab it because it's digital, I don't trust it. So I'll use Zoom, but then I'll get rid of it. Okay, I use Zoom in an anonymous email, anonymous name, anonymous everything, and I use it. Uber, I live in Vegas, at least part of the year, I live in Vegas. I love Uber, huge fan of Uber. My Uber is anonymous, 
and I only have Uber on my phone when I'm getting ready to use it. I play high stakes poker, taking an Uber, taking the black, uh, the black car service, and you're good to go. Go to one of the casinos, dropped off right at the poker room, go in like the VIP that I am, <laughs> and then go play poker, right? Sure. But I don't keep that app on my phone. I'll take the app off when I get home. Also, I never have Ubers drop me off or pick me up at my home, but that's a different story. So it's about thinking ahead. The next thing, Bluetooth. I don't recommend Bluetooth unless you're in a secure location. I can use Bluetooth at my home or at my office because they are sealed down. I have VPN routers. I have, I'm not going to go through my whole system, but I have a very expensive, very advanced system that if you hacked it, wow, that's impressive, right? Because I put a lot into my system. If I'm anywhere, I don't ever use public Wi-Fi, but if I'm out and I'm even using cell service, I am absolutely unequivocally not under any circumstances going to use Bluetooth. I only use Bluetooth in controlled environments. I'll use Bluetooth at my desk, at my office or at my home office as well. I'll use Bluetooth. That's it. Plug in, plug in headphones. Oh, it doesn't have a dongle. Too bad. Use a dongle. It's the same thing. Plug in. I got for my bows, for my beats, plug them in. Don't use Bluetooth. Very easy to hack. Very easy. Wi-Fi. Don't use Wi-Fi that's not yours. Very easy to hack. Don't have location services. Don't have permissions. No camera access. No microphone access. No access of any kind until you need it. Get in the habit of turning it on and off. You may not have physical toggles, but you have digital toggles on your phone on the app. Get into the settings on a regular basis. Airplane mode, always. The phone is off. Now, the thing I like about these, some of these Linux phones, take the battery out. The thing I like about my burner phones, take the battery out. iPhones can't take the battery out. That's why I only use this. I've done a, this video here about my phone system, incredible phone system. I use four phones on a daily basis. I break down why and I go into depth. That said, with this right here, I only use it in a couple locations. There are reasons why I have the latest iPhone. There are reasons why I have a phone with Graphene OS. There's reasons why I have burner phones. There's reasons why I have Linux phones. And I use each of them for their specific purpose. But I understand their limitations. If I'm ever going to travel with the iPhone, I turn off Bluetooth. I turn off Wi-Fi. I put it on airplane mode. Then I turn it off. Then I put it in a blackout bag like this one. Put the phone in here and you seal it. And that's how it travels. That's how the phone will travel. Is that 100% anonymous? No, it's not, not even close. In fact, there are a lot of things regularly. Now, one thing that I'll typically do is I'll keep the mic lock plugged in a lot of time. Now I've got to use a dongle on the iPhone with a mic lock on ones that actually have jacks like this, I can actually plug the mic lock in or on computers, but keep that in mind. But that's part of the process when you're going through this. Usually when I'm transferring this phone, you'd almost put more effort into transferring a phone than a gun. Now, don't take transferring guns lightly. They should be locked. They should be put in a lock box, follow all the laws. But I'm saying you should almost take that much, if not more, thought into what you're doing when you're transferring a phone because with IMIEs, with GPS, and I did a video recently, this video here, about how to take the GPS chip out of a 4G smartphone, and it's different for a lot of phones, and I'm actually building a Franken phone, that was part one, to building a phone where I'm adding a Raspberry Pi to the phone, and I'm taking out a lot of the internal components. You guys can check out that video. But it's a whole process. It's a whole process because these phones track you and stalk you. With the IMIEs and with all these other things stalking you, tracking you, are you truly 100% off grid? No, and even with burner phones, you gotta understand the voice print. It's why whenever I go anywhere, when I use my burner phones, I have a very, very good voice changer. So this plugs in because I'm out here on YouTube. I got a podcast. And so my voice is out there, right? In theory, absolutely, absolutely. But I'll tell you when it's not, when I plug this into here and then I have these headphones and then I have this voice changer, I have dozens of voices that I could have. And they sound pretty good. Some of them are a little bit robotic, but they sound pretty good. And then my voice print is gone. So yes, I get rid of my voice print. 
Absolutely. I also utilize Raspberry Pi as well as a compatible component with these phones. We're talking external VPNs, exter external testing environments, and a lot of other features that we utilize, which I'm gonna break down exactly how I use Raspberry Pis on phone in my Frankenphone phone build series, because there's really not a lot of really good phones. But that's one of the things I do with my uh, EDC kit here. I've got a lot of tech, which I've done a full video breakdown on this. If you haven't already watched the video that I did here, which is a breakdown of this tech. Incredible. But that's kind of where we are with this, guys. So locking down and securing your phone, you understand it's a big process and something you need to think about. Otherwise, this phone is tracking you, stalking you, listening to you, recording you, everywhere you go, everything you do. And that's not to count all the apps that do that. So you really need to limit some of the big tech apps you use. Or if you do have to use them, I get it. Use them in a controlled environment and use them sparingly and delete them if you're not using them in 24 hours. Look at your phone. You should never have more than a handful of apps on your phone. There are a few phones, a few apps that never leave my phone. But for the most part, for the most part, I absolutely delete most apps. I usually only have five, maybe five or six apps on my phone pretty much permanently besides the stuff that's default. And that goes for all of my phones. For most of my phones, I have nothing. Obviously my burner phones, I have nothing. Also, I import my contact list. I do not ever keep contact lists on my phone of my clients, my friends, uh, associates in poker and business. Never, never. Always encrypted, always off the phone. Plug it in in an instant, you got it. Unplug it, it's air gapped, always. Everything should be encrypted, always. Because otherwise you become a target. Anyway. Let me know what you guys are doing. Let me know what your favorite privacy-based phone is that is coming. There's a few of them coming. I've broke down a few here, and we will be reviewing a few more. Appreciate you guys checking out this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Put out new content all the time here on Privacy X. Have an amazing day, guys, and I will see you in the next video.